Good morning and welcome to our first live presentation of the conference. If you experience any technical difficulties throughout the session, please go to the help desk in the top menu bar and use the chat live functionality to speak directly with our platform support. There will be a Q&A towards the end of the presentation and we will also ask you to get involved in some polls throughout. You can engage in both of these activities via the Slido box on the right hand side of your screen. By scanning the QR code you currently see on the presentation slide or going to slido.com and entering the reference number C179. I will now hand over to our speaker for this session, Zoe Woods. Zoe, over to you. Thank you very much, Sam. Good morning, everybody. Um, and I'd really like to take the opportunity to uh, thank um, the organisers for the conference for letting me talk today about navigating claims in a changing world and talking to you about Blueprint 2, what it means um, and the things that we've been working on. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Zoe Woods and I'm a claims improvement manager within the Lloyds Claims team. I spend many of my days currently in the claims lab under the future at Lloyds and it's a really large part of my day job right from the start of Blueprint 1. My whole career has been claims. Um, I worked for Equitas for a number of years handling and resolving claims and I was at the start of that journey too. I worked at a number of managing agents both pre and post Equitas and before joining Lloyds I focus more towards claims improvements and opportunity. Personally, I'm really driven by making things better and easier to do. And I've never had an opportunity like this to be part of something that sets our market going forward as a whole. So I just want to briefly run through the learning objectives for today. So hopefully by the end of this session, you'll be able to understand what Blueprint 2 means for transformational change. Understand our approach and delivery for claims within Blueprint 2 before and after 2023. An understanding on how technology can enhance the ways in which we impact the outcomes for claims for our customers and how the community we can evolve and change looking at value added value adding customer activity and lean claims processes so i'd really just like to start with a couple of questions for the audience and um, the first one's going to be coming up on slido and it's around your preference of interactions with carriers as with carriers as customers of insurance companies. Great, thanks, Zoe. Yeah, so you can access this on the right hand side of your screen, just next to the presentation slide there, or via Slido using the QR code or the reference number C179. Um, just getting some answers in now. <laughs> A few more seconds. Great. Coming in, it is look, looking like number two is the most popular answer, Zoe. That's lovely. Yeah. That's great. Thanks. Thanks, Sam. And, and thanks, everybody. And I think the reason that I asked this question was just so that as we go through, we can think about um, the areas in which we need to improve and the areas that we need to transform, um, just in terms of how we best support all of our customers through their journeys, irrespective of their size or where they come from in our distribution networks. The second question that I have for everybody, so before I really start talking about Blueprint 2 and claims, um, I just wanted to have a quick go around and see everyone's familiarity with the document or with the website. Um, so here's just a quick question for everybody. Thanks, Louis. Again, available on the right hand side of your screen. We've got some answers coming in. That's great. A few seconds for those to come in. Right, it's looking like number one is the most popular answer, Zoe. Okay, that's great. Um, thank you, everybody, because that really helps me kind of just talk through these areas of, of Blueprint 2, just kind of understanding where everybody is on this on this journey for Blueprint 2 and claims. So thank you very much. 
Thanks, Anne. Okay, so um, so I will come to the diagram that you can see in a, in a minute. But really, what I'd like just to talk through is just to remind everybody is how did we get here for claims? So just really briefly, in May 2019, um, we launched a prospectus, which was asking thousands of stakeholders on their views on six big ideas to transform our marketplace and asking if there were any others that people would like to explore as stakeholders of the Lloyd's market. For claims, this was, can we pay a claim before a policyholder knows they have one? After the prospectus, this was followed up in September 2019 by Blueprint One, designing how those big ideas come to life. And for claims, the answer is yes, we can, with accurate and reliable data, using cutting edge technology that can assist before and before a loss and during a loss, and have the design of simplified processes that enable swift movement through the chain, and also providing that much needed transparency to our customers. So since September 2019, we get to where we are today. And in November of 2020, we published Blueprint 2. This, this work is now realised in a programme of design, build and delivery from now until 2023 and also will be carrying on beyond that. In unison with Blueprint 1 and Blueprint 2, we have taken a number of smaller steps on some of these principles that I've just talked about. So in 2020, there was a streamlining of the number of Lloyd's agreement parties for both binding authorities and non-binding authority claims, and some simplification of requirements to streamline some process. This was in response to supporting the market and providing more benefits to our customers as COVID developed. Today, these remain in place as business as usual. We launched and we are still in a pilot that automates leaders' decisions through a rule-based piece of technology in some targeted classes of business for claims payments. These claims are of a, of a more standard nature. This is what we call our first step to the world of automation and, and the opportunity that that provides us. And now we are tackling, through a much lengthier piece of work, our delegated claims processes, which is that important process re-engineering activity that was signaled in Blueprint 1 and also remains carrying forward through Blueprint 2. This activity is moving us to a better connected world. So I'm going to turn my attention now to the, the schematic that, that you see in front. <coughs> so for Blueprint 2, this is design, this is designed, built and delivered through end-to-end -end customer journeys. You can see on the left hand side, it's about getting covered, buying your policy, and having those and the carriers having supporting services to help shape that and also looking at um, the way we look at binding authorities as well. On the right hand side in the blue, you can see the recovering from loss. So this is what happens after you've purchased your policy. How do you make a claim and how do we get your claim resolved and closed? So the beating heart of um, of this end-to-end -end journey, as we call it, is the, the data store, which we'll see as the big gold bar at the bottom, something which you'll hear me, me refer to a little bit, which is the core data record. And this is the record that is created by the policy, the claims, and all of the um, accounting and settlement and ledger processes that we will need to have in place. This is the complete record, and it is stored in the data store. Also in the data store will be the ability for us to ingest and hold third party data sources. The second piece is the big dark blue piece and we call this the digital spine. The spine is the thing that holds everything together and this is where the technology interfaces the data and workflow. Again, including in rich data of which there can be multiples and we'll, we'll improve our offering on these as we deliver the transformation. The other important point or the design of our end-to-end -end is also the interconnectivity. We have multiple stakeholders in the market. We have multiple systems that are used by everybody who interacts business with us, and it's providing that connection point from people's systems into the platforms, and so we can move information easily between one thing to another. So these core principles at its heart 
are data, connectivity, process, effective collaboration, making sure that those processes are simplified, leading to the overall reduction of cost of doing business, making noise easier to work with, making us competitive and attractive for the long-term future too. So, one of the things that we are, we are looking at is, today I'm gonna to be focusing on the open market journey. <coughs> We have um, we have an open market journey and we also have a delegated authority journey. The open market journey um, is how I can best show you um, how the functionality for the claim solution will work. So within you will see there are notable differences between the open market journey and the delegated authority journey. And for claims, most of the delegated authority journey through to 2023 is going to be us getting ourselves in a position we will be able to push forward. So that's talking about that new connectivity um, between um, the placement and binding authorities to the claims, also people's external systems. But we have, a, we have some work to do that will get us to that place where we can actually fully realise the benefits um, of the full claim solution in the delegation authority world. So let's focus on the open market journey for a minute. So we're going to look at the placing platforms and the placing support and service on the on the right hand side, which is looking at how we how we place our business and those support services that we need. You can see in the middle piece, the dark blue um, around a digital gateway, digital processing and that and that data store with those core data records that will be absolutely, absolutely key. When you move across to the left hand side, sorry, to the right hand side, even um, you can see this is where this is where the claims are sitting, and we have two major buckets which are showing there, which is EFNOL, which is how we take in a claim, so whether that's directly from the policyholder, whether that's from a connected system, whether that is from um, or whether that is being made by the broker on behalf of the policyholder. And then the big piece in the centre is how we put all that together, how we move things around, how we, how we create those processes and the technologies that we use in order to move things around far more effectively than we can do today. This, this is really key for successful experiences. So for our customers, this should tackle many of the pain points that we experience today in managing claims. Many of these are not seen externally and anyone who's worked in claims or looks at reviewing the quality of any claims handling will know how that impacts today and what we actually have to do to manage those pain points to be passed Without, without those pain points being passed on to our customer. <coughs> so I'm now going to move us into, um, into what we call the, the immersive journey. So as I as I've said before, there are two different journeys for um, in Blueprint 2. One is for open market recovery from loss, the other is delegated authority. You can see here that the links are here. I would absolutely highly recommend um, taking the full tour um, of the getting covered and also the recovering from loss journeys, just to give you that sense of end-to-end -end transformation we're beginning to deliver. But today I'm going to focus on open market and I'm going to focus on the recovering from loss side of things. So if you just give me one minute and I will, um, I will move over to this. But I'm hoping everyone can now see what, I, what I'm sharing here. So these are clickable journeys that you can you can step through. So what's the first thing? Um, what's the first thing that's going to happen? Um, so this will be this will be the um, electronic first notice of loss that we call it. So a broker and or a policyholder is going to be able to submit a claim and all their supporting documents to their insurer directly through an easy to use claims portal or from their own claim system connected to our platform. And that's the important piece. That's the creation of the connectivity. The process will be simplified 
by instantly retrieving the policy data. So in that getting covered space where the policy has been placed and the record of that through really good quality standardized data is now sitting in the data store that can be pulled back through using unique referencing. Once that is notified, now we now as the claim progresses through its life cycle, we're now actually able through the portal to raise where the claim is. So you as a customer will know that we've received it, we've matched it, and it's moving on to the next thing. So some people have likened it to the sort of Domino's pizza where like you've placed your order and now you're moving on to the preparation, that type of thing, and giving that level of transparency. And this is something that we really do not have today. We can surface it, but it's not easy with the technology that we've currently got. So where do we step through after that? So we step through having matched the policy. So we've pulled the data record. We've got the information. It's matching to the relevant policy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and there could be multiple policies that, that will apply. And actually, the policy and the brokers will be able to select the one that that claim can attach to. There are initial verification checks that are going to be automatically performed on the policy. So things like, is the loss in the period, has the premium been paid, um, that, that type of thing. And again, relevant parties can be immediately notified that the EFL is completed and the policy is matched. And this is all, you know, this is all intended to be within, within minutes and, and, and really much, pretty much instantaneous because the data is being stored in the data store. We're complementing it with the new claims information that's coming in. And we're able to just really quickly do those checks and verifications. So what happens after that? So after the initial view of the policy, um, of the policy matching, we kind of get to, okay, is, is, the claim, is, is the claim covered? There'll be lots of sections of policy that will need to be checked and verified. So the solution is going to complete some initial coverage checks. So we can use this based on the data, so the location of loss, um, uh, you know, the, the risk limit, the you know, things like that. All of those things that we can match to create these initial verification checks. So these really simple checks are intended to support the claims handlers and increase decision making. So that speed is really important because we've now, by using technology, we have now taken away some of the things that ordinarily in your head you would have a checklist for and actually allows those claims adjusters to then support that path of coverage ver verification where it is subjective. So I think it's really, really important though throughout this that we say the claim solution is only going to act as a guide and it won't claim uh, claims on behalf of insurers. So this really is just trying to get people to do to do to spend their time on the things that are absolutely really important for the customer and progressing the claim. So section four is a dynamic routing engine and and this is more than you know I think um, what what we see today where we, we do triage claims already we, we do look at the complexity of them we do make sure that they get to to the right people however this is high this is this is a um, this dynamic routing engine is going to direct claims and it's going to be based on large sets of rules, policy information and characteristics of the claim. And it will push it to the appropriate channel for the appropriate activity to happen. So claims handlers therefore can focus on the most value adding activities, speeding up the overall life cycle. And this is where some of the rules for automation what piece of technology do you use so that somebody doesn't have to put their hands on that particular thing actually they can move to the value adding piece that maybe comes next or runs alongside it and again i reiterate we will not be declining any claims based on this routing engine so once it's been through the routing engine and we've got it to the right person there are a number of things that need to happen um, and claims doesn't happen in sequential steps at any at any given time there could be you know there could be multiple things occurring in a claim that a claims handler needs to focus on so how do we create that workflow how do we create that environment where people can see what the automation rules are doing what the artificial intelligence is telling us um, versus things that they need to focus on with the customer or with, with the broker 
So this is intelligent workflow management. It supports the creation, assignment and tracking, completion of tasks through this connectivity. So we're back to so we're back to having this um, environment whereby stakeholders can um, connect with the platform in order to receive this information. So this connectivity piece, and and the other important piece is today we have a very very closed way of looking at things. If you aren't um, if you want a broker or a carrier um, or or the processing arm, actually you have no visibility of of um, of our electronic claims process. So by doing this, we can open up and we can allow the people that support us. So our um, our our DCAs eventually, our experts that we use, our forensic accountants can all connect in. So market collaboration, and this is where this is another piece that we're, we will deliver that we'll look at <coughs> when we are in the center and when we have things to do on claims, we're often needing to speak to our experts. So how do we create these collaboration tools that market participants are not just the lead, but there may be another person in the chain, there may be a company market in the chain. Um, how do we create that environment where people can come together and complete what they need to complete and then automatically this moves on. So you can see there's a couple of things that we're looking at there. So instant messaging, messaging and chat, collaboration rooms so that people can come together and, and, and look at particular things. Things can get resolved far more easily without the exchange of emails um, that happens today. So we're trying to bring in anything that we are currently really doing manually outside of our infrastructure. So what do support services look like? So as, as we as we build the solution, as, as we move through, um, there is there is an opportunity for us to look at what support services as a market that we can provide. So tools that ingest third party data, supporting um, pre event exposure analysis um, can be provided centrally. So these type of services do drive operational efficiencies across insurers. Um, but it's where they make sense for, for these to, to be set up. I mean, that ingestion of third party information can also enrich that ethanol. It can enrich the triage engine, the AI, the automation. So where the focus is for people on that, for people to carry out value adding claims activity, and also that change to learn, learning to trust and rely on technology interweaved into the process. So we've learned a lot about this um, ingestion of third party since the start of this journey. So we've already seen through the market, practical examples where intelligence, risk locator, imagery technology has absolutely shown as speedy claims processes can, can, be, can be undertaken. So California wildfires, the, the, um, the, Beirut, the, the Beirut port explosion as examples, where they've really in almost you know, within within a very short time period, they've received footage back, shows them the buildings are no longer there, sadly, um, and they're able to deal much more effectively and quicker with the customers. <coughs> there are so many more opportunities to deliver this. So from simple photos being being provided at FNL to our much more complex claims and business across our classes. So this is a real, this is a real new area. It's how we develop support services that absolutely make the most of that. So faster claims payments. So one of the feedbacks that we've had from many, many stakeholders across the market has been the time in which it takes us to, to, to pay a claim. So the faster payments is going to look at significantly reducing the time for claims to be paid through an automated payment solution. The payments, the payments can be, will be made directly from insurers to appropriate parties, whether it's a broker or directly to an end customer and reducing the number of touch points that is required to meet that, to reach that policyholder too. Um, so also that, I mean, I can hear, you know, there was lots of questions around this and, and, and understandably, there is a big part of um, if you are, um, if you are not the recipient of the payment, but you're going to need to know it's occurred for accounting settlement, how will we set that up? So we will 
provide reconciliation services so that you can reconcile your own accounts and your own, our own ledgers. And reporting. And reporting is a really, um, really, really broad um, subject. So there's things around um, regulatory reporting, there's things around performance reporting and KPIs. But when you think about how we're going to put together the dynamic routing engine, how we're going to use technology, automation, artificial intelligence, and how we have the ability to be able to extract lots more new data as well as structured core data. So structured core data, along with lots and lots of um, unstructured data, as I suppose you would call it today. How do we absolutely harness this and how do we get this into reporting? What do people need? What are people entitled to see? So there's a lot in this reporting section. But for 2023, we're looking at simplifying some reporting as a result of the core data record um, and also um, looking at how and if we can facilitate some automatic reporting um, for certain purposes. But this is the start of the journey. Okay, so I'm just going to um, I'm just going to pause there for a second while I just move back to while I move back to the presentation. Hopefully everybody's got that. So, so I think hopefully I've given you a flavour of of what the, the power of a connected, technology driven um, technology driven and data driven claim solution can look like. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about this end-to-end -end approach. So if, we, if you think back to a few slides ago where you have the digital spine holding everybody, everything together, and you have the getting covered and the recovering from loss. So development of an end-to-end -end approach, this end-to-end -end approach is going to help with end-to-end -end design of new products coming into the market. There'll be a lot of new things that will complement our marketplace. It opens up opportunity for new new and more diverse talent pools. We've got exciting roles that will be created for technology data service management, to name a few. Huge opportunities for our workforces to retrain or try something new. Um, and finally, one of the impacts from COVID um, is the accessibility for people created with a model of home working that will be featuring for many organisations I would imagine going forward. So this is a really exciting time for us. So I'm just going to pause there, and um, Sam's going to load. Um, Sam's going to release on Slido a, a section for you to have your say. So after everything you've heard from me um, about how we can try and adapt to a future world and what that means for claims through Blueprint Two, um, are there any areas, any core areas you think we aren't addressing that would increase our customer acceptance? Okay, Sam, you're going to leave the um, you're going to leave the question open or the comments open. Yes, we'll leave it open for the rest of the presentation, so people can still fill that out throughout the presentation. Lovely, thank you. Um, so, so with all of that in mind, and I appreciate I have covered an awful lot of things. What's the focus for 2021? So, here we can see on the left hand side, first release of the data placement standards launch of the next generation of PPL and this is all about the getting this part is about the getting covered side first release of placement support services um roll out of delegation authority solutions um first release of the data store um, and supporting governance first release of the digital spine and digital gateway that enables the processing of that absolutely important core data record so there's two underpinning things the digital spine and really good data. One single source of the truth from start to finish. <coughs> so the setup of the run model to support new digital products and services in the market. So in the claim space, testing a new claim solution, focusing on that portal that we talked about, making sure that we can um, make this visible and transparent to our customers all the way through. The routing and orchestration, how do we get things to people where they need to undertake activity? How do we set up automation? 
all of those will be testing that for open market claims. So the other important delivery for 2021 is right at the very beginning, I talked about that really important piece of process re-engineering in the delegated authority world. So delivering those delegated authority claims, process improvements and faster pay payment solutions for open market and delegated authority as well. So for 2022, what does that look like? So on, on the left hand side of this, you can see iterate and scale future releases of the core data record. So roll up and scale across further classes of business for open market. Roll up and scale the new claim solution. Roll out and drive market adoption for dele delegated authority processes. So part of this delivery model is is absolutely um, this view of we we build it, we test it, we learn from it, we make another iteration of it, and that's how we roll up. There is no there's no real big bang for claims um, through Blueprint Two. It really is that how do we because we're making it sustainable and fit so that as we roll up, roll up, we're learning more and more every time. And also we have to look at the complexities of our marketplace as well. North American property doesn't have the same complexity um, or has different complexity to that of, um, say, let's say K&R business. So therefore we, we're really mindful about that. And the rules that we're gonna have to set within um, how we're ingesting information in some classes, how we are setting up automation rules, this will differ class to class. So therefore this delivery of um, this sort of thin slice, as I call it, repeatedly iterating and building is the way that we're going to deliver the program for the future. So I'm just going to do a quick recap on the learning objectives. So hopefully now you'll have an understanding of what Blueprint 2 really means for transformational change, understanding our approach and delivery for claims within Blueprint 2, and understanding on how that technology can enhance the ways in which we impact the outcome for our customers and how our community could evolve. So Sam, I'm going to turn it over to Q&A now. The first question we've got, um, can the policyholder slash insurer, uh, for example, fleet manager, risk manager, submit an FNOL? The design says yes they can yes they can they'll be able to do it directly they'll also be able to receive updates and also interact as well so if they feel that they're not um you know something's taking too long um you know they know it's in a certain place they need it to move on they'll be able to ask questions of where that would be through the portal back into back into the platform great thank you Okay, the next one. Um, can the system verify the submitted underwriting information to identify potential material misrepresentation or non-disclosure? I think I think that's that's an that's a really good question. And and I think there's going to be a lot of work to do to look at the information that is provided as part of the getting covered um so that information that's available at the time of placement versus how we're seeing it come through i would say that my view would be that, that would be an iterative process about how we would use technology to help us with that but there's a lot of subjectivity um so i wouldn't say that that would probably be one of the first things that, that we would do i think that would still be a person job okay thanks very much um can the system verify the submitted underwriting information? Oh, sorry, I've just read that one. <laughs> um, from the customer's perspective, a claim is a claim. Do they need a distinct open market and DA solution? You're on mute, sorry. sorry. <laughs> this is going to be fun, isn't it? Um, the quick answer is no, we don't. Um, I think it's when we look at how our distribution channels currently work and how we are looking at, which I'm sure you'll hear through throughout the conference, is how we're putting together how our delegated authority space is going to work for the future. We need to get claims working alongside that, and then we have to think about how we move that into a real risk and claim live environment like we would for open market. It's just not 
blueprint two for delegation flow is about getting us to that point to think about where we will release some of these things for open market by 2023. So they're just it's just behind. So from the from the front of it, absolutely no, everything should be able to use the claim solution. It's just the how and how we interconnect everybody, how we look at those people that are handling, how we how we work with the people that are handling our claims and how we bring them in. So there's there's just a lot of work in that space. Great, thank you. Um, so next one, how does your system deal with policies which have features like policy run, uh, warranties which need to be complied with before coverage can attach? That's a good question. That's all part of, I think, how we would set up the coverage verification. The examples that I gave you there were, you know, pretty pretty simple um, in terms of some of the things we could look at. But warranties, premiums, um, you know, all of those sorts of things are the things that we will need to set up. And the question is, should we, it, are some of them a more subjective approach where we should at the moment not look at make it, or is there a level we can go to where we can indicate to somebody that there may be an issue with that and somebody needs to take a look at it? This is all part of this design and this build that we're undertaking through the sort of second half of 2021. Great, thank you, Zoe. Um, please, can you give a flavour of what delegated claims process improvements are being considered? Uh, absolutely. Um, so, um, so after, um, let me just set the scene a little. That might that might be helpful for everybody. Um, so, in the middle of 2020, um, we had a um, we had a company come in and help us look at the end to end processes. So, this was right from our um, from our from our DCAs handing the claims in their system, producing their border work, right the way through to it coming into the market infrastructure and coming out the other end, and money's being paid and returned, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to the brokers, and then onward transmission to the DCAs. So we had a number of workshops with everybody that sits in that chain. Um, the output of that report has led to us focusing in predominantly three areas. One is how do we really simply ingest and validate a border row? Um, how, how do we do that and how do we cut down the number of queries, the backwards and forwards that happens between managing agents, carriers, uh, managing agents, brokers and DCAs? How do, how do we make that effective? And then how do we move it through the chain quickly? How do we deal with, um, how do we deal with lost funds? Uh, sorry, lost funds. How do we deal with cash calls? So what's the process for us dealing with cash calls? Um, the third one that we are looking at is Actually, how do we tell people where a border row is? So how is a stakeholder in this chain? Do you know the status of where your border row is? So, um, and this is so that people know something's happening. Somebody knows they need to do something. And it's about increasing that transparency and accountability for those where these problems, um, these issues may, may arise. And the last piece of this is how do we move money more quickly? So those are the things that we're focusing on. Um, and if you um, if you look at the future at Lloyd's website, there's a number of things in there um, around the building the future blog, and there's a number of videos on there, and there's a couple on there about the first part of the process, and we're just now embarking into the second on this focus piece. <coughs> Great, thank you. Um, a couple more. So how do you see the role of audit changes as the placement and claims processes change? That's really important. So, so how we um, how we look at um, how, how we look at it today in terms of both technical um, sort of uh, obviously that check against sort of the contractual nature, the technical claims handling, and then that customer aspect. I think we really need to think about how do all of these new solutions, really good structured data much more information on unstructured data being able to be processed. How do we look at that? How do we set ourselves up to do that? So that actually we are pulling out really good quality things that are happening. You know, the things that aren't working so well, um, you know, areas that we're missing, um, areas that can be enhanced. So I guess my, my, question to, my question to everybody is, what are the things that you would like to see? What would really start to raise some of that quality um, quality side of things um, rather than technical and process related. Because hopefully the processes will 
many of them are just will be so streamlined um i'm sure in your head you've probably all got things around okay well if you automate that what, what does that mean in terms of quality so these are all things that we have to address and actually this is where everybody's feedback is absolutely important we may not be able to address everything now but we will never lose any of the feedback we've got so when the time comes for us to be able to to start thinking about how we transition we'll be able to use all of those thoughts and feedback that we've had Great, thank you. Um, we have a question, and please tell me if you need more context around this, sorry, of, of what ter territories will this be used in? So, ultimately, it, it should be everywhere. And it's this part of, um, um, it's this part of how we, how we design, build, and we, in, and we roll out. So there'll be a selection of, as you can see from, from the slides, I put, a selection of a class of business. So that may be territory specific for the time being, but we won't forget about any territory and we won't forget about distribution, any di other distribution methods. It's just a case of timing and how we design it, how we roll it up, and how we release it. Because this is a huge transformational change. It's not just a transformational change for claims. It's a, it's a huge transformational change in terms of a new data store, a new better core data record, lots of systems um, coming together um, and connecting with each other. Um, so so the, the transformational change, you know, hits every part of what we do today. So it's finding the very best way that we can build, test, scale and, and roll up and up. So those benefits can be realised over, over, over periods of time. Great, thank you. We don't actually have any more um, questions coming through at the moment. Um, so I believe, if, do you have anything else you'd like to add, Zoe, to the end of the session? Um, the, the only thing is, one, I would say thank you very much for sort of um, for listening to me for the last sort of half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, the, the website itself does have a get involved. Um, in the journeys themselves that I kind of click through, um, you can actually leave feedback there. So whether that feedback is related to the future or the feedback is related to you really need to think about this, um, that's all welcome and, and absolutely. There's also a section where people can get involved as well and you can register for updates. So, um, and there's monthly newsletters and things, things that are going out. Um, so there's a lot of information on that. So I'd really highly encourage everybody just to, just to have a look through and, and, and see what's there. Thank you very much, Zoe. Um, so we've now come to the end of the presentation. We've not got any questions left. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we hope to see you at the next presentation at 11.15 today.